صوب الحق وتواصوب الصبر صدق الله المولانا العظيم All praises to our Lord and peace and blessings be upon Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I wanted to speak about the value of time and uh, we might see time as a very extra entity. But in reality, time is the small pieces with which life is made. So when I'm talking about time, I am basically talking about your life. Because at the end of the day, life is basically small pieces of time that Allah has given to us on earth. So today, for example, this Friday is a time but it's the piece of my life. So when Juma passes, a part of my life is finished also. So today morning, the Friday morning, it's gone now. It was part of my time today, but if I wasted it today morning, that part of my life is gone now. So our relationship with time has to be fixed. And we are living in a time where our attention span it's all over the place we're not able to focus and again it's not your problem it's not my problem we didn't mess up our minds we didn't do nothing wrong the fact that you're not able to focus is not your problem it's a global problem it's an international problem all over the world people have this problem <coughs> and there's very obvious reasons why we can't focus and one of the biggest culprits is technology. And as Muslims, we have a second big problem. And that's what I want to focus on, not technology, the second problem, which is as Muslims, as the global village becomes smaller and smaller, for some, re for some reason, you are being told about Muslim events in some other country. You are being told of the problems in other small, smaller places where you're not able to do much. But now your attention is all over the place. And we cannot focus on one thing at a time. And if you want a good example, just go through your phone and look at all the Islamic messages you got in the last one week. Look at the Islamic messages you got in the last one week. They're just all over the place. Like imagine if you went to a school where you didn't know the syllabus. You didn't know the curriculum. You'll ask the teacher, what are we studying? Uh, everything. You're like, what? This is going to make me go crazy if you teach me everything. Teach me one thing, please. That's how as Muslims, we're just sending each other Islamic messages <clears throat> and they're all over the place. We don't know what to focus on. So as a community, everybody is an expert in nothing but knows everything. The community, we know everything, but nobody's an expert in anything, Islamically speaking. Islamically speaking, zero experts, but everybody has a voice. Everybody has a comment to make. I think, sorry, you don't get to think because you're not expert in that field and you haven't studied, you just watch a few videos. And that doesn't make you anybody. That makes you a Mr. Nobody. So when we need someone of, of high caliber, we have very few people to point to. In the Muslim community, when it comes to the real talk, less people that can do the talking. The more people that can just give opinions. And why did that happen? Because we got too much random information coming into our minds about every other topic. Muslim foundations, Muslim entities, businesses, Masajid, Madar, it's like anything. We're just getting so much information and there's no filter. Somebody might be 15, I'm sending him something that's, that should be sent to somebody who's 40. But I'm sending him the same message, Islamic, no, they're all Muslims, send it to everybody on my, my, my contact list. Bro, there's, there's a big list of contact on your Muslim list, don't send it to everybody. Every field has its people. There was a reason that these also gave specific advices to one part of the Sahaba, another portion of Sahaba <coughs> gave them different advices, the Muhajireen, the Ansar, the younger Sahaba, the women, the men, they got different advices. 
And now we're just sending the same message to the whole community. <clears throat> we're becoming marketing experts. Marketing, it's all marketing. Just send it, send it, there'll be some benefit. Come on, this doesn't work like that. <clears throat> right now, for example, I came into this mushroom, I came into the parking lot, I saw some people focused on selling vegetables and fruits. I saw somebody doing other jobs. I saw other people doing other things in the masjid. Imagine if we tried to keep the vegetable sellers updated on what's happening in the parking lot, what's happening in the masjid. They'd be like, oh, leave me alone. I'm just doing this. Leave me alone. I want to just do this part. Because I can't focus on what's happening in the masjid. I'm selling vegetables here. Leave me alone. <coughs> and the stress of the parking lot, the other brothers who were in, involved in the parking lot, let them deal with that. So you divide the tasks and you become an expert at it. That's how the masjid was beautiful. But as an ummah, we're not doing that. As a masjid, we did it. But as an ummah, just sending messages. Stop sending messages. Stop sending me your videos, Islamic videos. Nobody wants it. Everybody's confused, like, what should I focus on in Islam? Islam is a very simple religion. One day, Nabi was giving the khutbah the Arabic part of the khutbah. A Bedouin came, and for those who don't know the dynamics of traveling in Arabia at that time, the dynamic was such that if you left for hours to come to Jumu'ah, you had to make it back before sunset. So this Bedouin came, the Hati, he said, just tell me Islam. I mean, it's the middle, in the middle of the khutbah. Maybe some grabbed that chair, sat down in the middle of the khutbah, told him the five pillars of Islam, salat, zakat, hajj, fasting, finished it and came back in the khutbah and continued. Islam was being taught in three minutes, in two minutes. The, the full message of Islam was being taught in a few minutes. You probably heard more Islamic audio video in the last one week, and you're still confused about religion and what Allah wants from you specifically. What the world is doing, that's fine. What are you doing specifically? And the level of basic education in Islam is very low. Many of us, if you look at our masajid, who are we catering to? Adults or kids? Mostly kids. By the time a child is 15, he's out of the masjid, he's done. He doesn't go back to any Islamic courses, it's done. As if to imply life is easy after you're 15. Come on, life is harder as you become older. <laughs> as you get older, life is more messed up, it's more crazy. You go crazy as you get older, you get more problems. That's the time we should be educating people. When they're 15, 20, 25, 30, 45, that's the time we should be educating people. That's where their wisdom comes in. Their hikmah comes in that time. And by then we stop talking to adults. We only talk to the kids. And even the kids were teaching them the very basics. And if you ask the adults of the basics, they wouldn't know it. So for example, if I had a Fatiha test right now, and I picked up 15 people to read the Fatiha perfectly, guaranteed 10 people will feel the Fatiha test. Like that good pronunciation, guaranteed out of 15 people, 10 people will fail the Fatiha test. Am I being unfair? I'm being honest with you. Our basic level of Fatiha test will not pass. If I ask you, do I kunut? <laughs> We're going to be laughing at each other all day. Do I kunut? Because half of us probably don't know uh, do I kunut properly. Then we say, oh, I get confused, Marana. Don't, don't, don't put me on the spot. I get confused. Al-Tahiyyad, Darul Ibrahim, we get confused. Why? Basic education is missing. We're talking bigger topics. And in case you're thinking I'm not on a good topic, Umar radiallahu anhu one day was giving a Jumma khutbah, can you guess what his topic was? At the Hayat. After conquering one third of the world, Umar radiallahu anhu was talking about how to read the Hayat properly. At the Hayat, Mulindahi wa Salawat wa Taribatu, whatever of the riwayah you're reading, he was teaching at the Hayat from the Mimba on a Jumma khutbah. Because basics create communities, basics, basics, basics. Basics, basics, basics. That's all they're supposed to be. Learn the basics. Get away from the big topics. Nobody needs the big topics. You're not going to solve the world problem. Neither am I going to solve it. You need to solve your problem. I have to solve my problems. And our biggest focus in this deal is only getting to Jannah. Remember that. Your biggest focus in life is to get to Jannah. That's it. 
our biggest focus through Islam is to get to Jannah. And if you are more spiritual, then we will say the biggest focus of Islam is to be in love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to enjoy the purpose of life, to enjoy the Jumu'ahs, to enjoy the Asr Salah, to enjoy the Mother of Salahs. When the namaz times come, people should be able to tell, ha, ah, he's getting happy, Asr time is coming, look, his mood is changing, he's getting happier. That is what the purpose of religion was, to become spiritually enhanced. Ruhaniya. Everybody will find their jobs, people will find their careers, just give them some Islamic guidance and focus on getting people to focus with their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as a person becomes more useful, he will do community work. I'm not denying community work. As you become more connected with Allah, instantly you feel like doing something for the community. I don't have to lecture you on to do something for the community. I don't need to talk like that. If you are a man of God, you will serve the community. I don't have to tell you serve someone. I'm not going to tell you go feed someone. You have to do that, Baba. You have aqal. I don't have to tell you go feed a human. I don't have to remind you, go send money to your back home relatives, they need some money. I don't have to tell you that. You do that with your aqal, I would have to tell you that. Give zakat on time. Come on, do it. Why do I have to tell you? <coughs> We're missing fajrs. That's what we need to focus on. With the, the, small, the bigger things, focus on what, what I have to do to my relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Religion was simple. Fix yourself, clean the heart, and better your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nabi Sallallahu compared a believer to a tree where the bark of the tree is needed in constructing, the roots are needed for other purposes, the leaves are needed for another purpose. A believer is beneficial when he's a boy, when he's a man, when he's an adult, when he's a senior, he's just beneficial to everybody. That's how what we need to become, very beneficial. And uh, one thing I want to mention, Yusuf alayhi salam. When he was in jail, and the king had seen a dream, and the fate of the country, the next 14 years, was going to depend on that one dream. So it was a big deal. When they asked him for the dream interpretation, he didn't say, oh, but you're putting me in jail. For, I've been in jail for so many years. First help me out, then I'll, you scratch my back, I'll scratch your back. He didn't say that. He didn't say it. You pay up, I'll, I'll serve later. He didn't say money, money talks. He didn't say that. He first gave the interpretation of the dream, and then when they went, they took care of him anyways. What I'm trying to say is learn to serve, the money will come later. Don't worry about the money. The benefits to you will come to you. But you can't be walking around looking at your wallet the whole day. learn to serve. We need to serve each other and that's only going to happen again. I'm, I'm going back again to the main topic. We need to focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is lovable. Allah is lovable. Every sifat, sifat of Allah, every quality of Allah has love in it. When we think about Allah, our love increases for Him. But we're too busy in shahawat, in desires, in passions. So we need to focus on how much time am I spending on feeding my shahawat. When I'm eating, it's for my own ego. When I'm watching TV, it's for my own pleasure. When I'm on my phone, it's my own pleasure. When I'm with my wife, my focus is how can I maximize my benefits from her. When she asks for arha, <coughs> no, 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 don't bother me. Just give me my dinner or my lunch. Give me this, give me that. When she wants something, no, don't bother me, Baba, don't bother me. Why? Because we're trying to max, maximize the, the shadi, the wedding, in a way where one guy benefits more than the other. Women, if they're listening, same problem with you. You are trying to maximize your benefits out of your man. You're not trying to help the person. Selfishness, extreme selfishness. And that is a sign of a depraved human. In a way, we're depraved because we're, we don't know how to serve others. All we know is how to serve, not ourselves, our ego. It's not even the body. If you look at some people, they, they might look tired. They're like, Baba, you don't sleep enough. You don't eat well. You don't exercise. 
Why? Because he's not focused on the body even, he's focused on the ego. So most of us, our bodies are not even doing well. Only our nafs is doing well. Our bodies are not even doing well. Only the ego is doing well. And if you study all the signs of Akhirah and Khayama, it's all about the ego. People will be arrogant, people will commit zina openly, people will go towards different haram uh, enjoyments because it'll all be about the ego to have their own maza, our own desires, our own shahwat. The hadith mentions shuhan muta'an, such a greed where it is obeyed. So greed comes into the heart, but the person goes right after it to obey it. So if you want to summarize qayamat, it's selfishness. Qayamat is khud ghazi. Qayamat is khud ghazi. My fayda, my fayda, my fayda. And that is khud ghazi. In every single situation, I have to see where I make it, how much benefit I'm getting out of this. So if we wanted to delay qayamah, it will be to focus on ourselves and stop being selfish, learn to serve others without feeling the pinch. Sometimes you'll see somebody, oh, I'm doing this, but it's so annoying. Oh, I have to go do this for my family. I hate doing that. Oh, I'm going to go babysit my kids. Why are you so upset about it? Enjoy it. You have to go do something for your mother. Smile. Say, Alhamdulillah, I get to go do service in my mom's house. Alhamdulillah, I get to send money to my father. Alhamdulillah, I get to do this. I get to do this. Smile about it. Why are you upset about it? You are somebody's hands and feet. Say, Alhamdulillah. You have the access, the ability, the money, the intelligence, the income to help somebody. Smile about it. Don't take it as a burden. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed the rizq of another person coming through you, you're blessed. You're not cursed. Don't be like, oh, this guy uses me. He doesn't use you. Good people's help is always needed. And even in the dynamic of marriage, many people have this negativity where they keep asking, oh, what does the wife bring to the table? I wanna, I'm gonna finish off on this. The concept of marriage has been destroyed by the Western thought. The Western thought is, what does she bring to the table? As if the table is a financial table, so I put a degree down, she puts a degree down. I'm so sorry, marriage is not like that. She doesn't put a degree down. She puts her motherhood down and says, I'll be a wife and a mother. That's all she brings to the table. And no be hayai. <coughs> Islam just demands from a woman that she doesn't do anything haram. Sexually, that's it. That's one of the biggest rights of a woman that the man can ask for. She doesn't do any sins and she brings herself to the marriage and that's it. Many men have this thought, oh, I earn this much money. Well, how much money are you gonna bring to the marriage? I'm putting this with money for the down payment. How much are you pay for the, for the down payment? Your wife is not a business partner. Many men have this contention with their wives. Like, oh, well, she doesn't earn enough money. She's not your business partner. Your wife is not a business partner. The, how we should look at it is, she brings the next generation into the world and she's doing tarbiyat of the next generation. She'll fix the next generation, but all you have to do is cater to the woman and take care of her and don't bother her and don't keep asking her, what did you do today? What did you do today? Many times, men want a schedule from their wives or what did you do all day? Maybe the woman has a lazy day. Let her have a lazy day. Maybe your boss can ask you, what did you do today for eight hours? <coughs> Maybe your boss can ask you, what did you do eight hours in the shift today? But you cannot go ask your wife, what did you do today for eight hours? It doesn't work like that. So once we get these tensions and, and these unnecessary stresses out of our hearts and our lives, our life will become more easier. And we will learn to focus. And whatever is our job, we will do it. And whatever doesn't concern us, we'll say, leave me alone. And I'll finish off with the example of the past where people were so goal-focused, they would study the fiqh with their teacher. For example, the fiqh of Salat. Then when the zakat chapter would come, they'd say, Shaykh, I don't need to. I'm going to, I don't need to do it anymore. I'm not going to be earning a lot of money, so I'm never going to be giving zakat. So it's okay, I'll stick with the Salat. I'm done. They'll walk away. Because they don't want to waste time with anything else. So may Allah give us a few to understand.